Welcome back, everyone, inside the Journeyman Boxing Studios. This is Double Job Radio. I'm your host, Rich Cunez. As always, follow us online at journeymanboxing.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Rich Q on Q. We also updated all the uh, golden and silver gloves activities across the country. Uh, we gave you some updates on the New York Daily News golden gloves. We'll stick to the theme of New York boxing. Uh, I think really one of the hardest working boxers uh, in the East Coast on the line right now. Tommy the Razor Reno and joins us for a couple moments. And I know a lot of people have called him the working class boxer, but his backstory is pretty impressive. It's pretty inspiring. And he's kind enough to join us on this edition of Double Job Radio. And uh, Tommy, good to catch up, my friend. How's everything? Everything's good, man. You know, productive. Everything's good. You know, I, I think the most interesting thing about your career, and we'll get into it, is a lot of people don't understand what it's like when a guy kind of has to self-promote, learn the ins and outs of the boxing industry, uh, work nine to fives or, you know, two jobs, get in training, find time to balance everything out. But you've been able to do that and you've been able to do it successfully in your career. You know, talk a little bit about that and, 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 and how do you attribute or what do you attribute that type of balance and work ethic to? Um, I attribute it to a mindset, really. That's all I've ever known. So, um, so when I first turned pro in uh, late 2006, you know, I, uh, I was working a full-time job at the time. And, you know, uh, I managed myself my first fight, then my second fight, then my third fight. And I said, no, I don't need to be here. Basically, my plan was to actually get a manager for a few fights. And then after I had two, three, four fights, I said I could handle this on my own. So <laughs> you know, to pay somebody else to do what I could do for myself, you know. And I want to be in control of my own destiny and make my own decisions regardless. So, um, uh, so basically, you know, it's, it's been year after year of the same thing. You know, I work a regular 40 hours a week. I, I train full time. I got to do everything a regular fighter has to do. Um, you know, running and, uh, uh, my one day off basically is Sunday. So, so I work, you know, I work, uh, Sundays and Thursday nights. I actually work overnight. So I work from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I do it a little differently. So I, I work overnight and then I, uh, you know, I'll get my run out of the way and relax for a couple hours, get some of my, you know, um, you know, personal stuff done. And then I go to the gym around like 6, 6 30. I train and then get a little rest before work. And, and it's, you know, it's a grind. But I've been at the same position in my job for 10 years. You know, I got a decent amount of vac- vacations I'm accumulated. So, you know, I have weekends off to flex with my boxing. Um, and again, like I said, it's a mindset. I mean, uh, it used to do something a certain way. And um, it just becomes a routine. Oh, oh, over, overnights, are, overnights are brutal. I did overnights years ago doing radio in Ohio, of all places. And it was about six months, it felt like I spent 10 years up there, but overnights are just, <laughs> overnights, yeah, they, you know, they just mess with your body. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm fortunate where, you know, I walk in the door at 7.15, I wash my face, I brush my teeth, and I'm out cold by 7.30, I have no sleeping issues. On my nights off, you know, uh, I can fall asleep, no problem, at 10 o'clock or 2 in the morning, makes no difference when yeah. I rest you sleep. So I got no sleeping issues, thank God. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I keep myself so busy with the with the boxing and work and running around that you know what when it's time to sleep it's time to sleep I'm, yeah. I'm able to just close my eyes and, and go to sleep. Yeah. And, um, again, it, a lot of it, it's just mental. You know, um, it would be great if you know I, I was in a position where I can just train, eat right, and rest right. You know, yeah. and, uh, and and that'd be a beautiful thing. You know, but uh, if the sport is hard enough as it is, you know, a lot of people, you know. Even that way of life is not easy. I mean, I know a few people that box full time and that's all they do. And, uh, and it's still a time, you know, and then I tell them, you know, imagine packing up 40 hours of work a week on top of what you're doing right now. Imagine, imagine doing it that way, you know. Because people say, how do you do it? But I'm used to doing it. It's just, you know, it is what it is. And, and I'm fine with it. And to tell you the truth, you know, after a fight, when I have a little downtime, I, it's almost too much downtime. You know, when I take the police off from the gym, I don't know what to do myself. So now just working a regular 40 hours a week, I kind of sit around and I'm like, uh, I'm bored. I got all this free time. You know, I'm not in the gym today. Uh, you know, so it's just what I'm used to. I want to go back. Uh, we'll talk about your last couple fights. Um, you had the, the the big win, and I, I thought you dominated Carl McNichols um, for the USBO welterweight title uh, several months ago, and you moved around while you kept your distance. And I I, I didn't think the fight was after the second or third round. You just kind of controlled all the action. Um, 
and uh, it was it was it was a good win for you. And I know you you wanted an opportunity uh, to step up a little bit. They threw the young kid in there uh, against you, Dusty Hernandez Harrison. And I know uh, there's a lot of hype. There was a lot of hype surrounding him. And uh, quite frankly, you know, I've gone on record saying that I'd like to see him uh, step up his level of competition as his career progresses. And I know that was a tough, frustrating fight for you. Did did when it was all said and done. I guess uh, not the 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 worth the waiting gold, but did you did you did the hype was the hype confirmed? Do you think he's that great of a young fighter, or did he just do anything different and, and maybe just kind of kept at bay a little bit? I know you were it was it was hard for you to get inside during that fight. Well, listen, I mean, he's a solid fighter. I knew going into the fight that he's a solid fighter. Um, in today's you know in this day and age, um, you have to. The criteria for boxing, the success of boxing is just so high, you know. Um, you got great fighters like Pacquiao and Mayweather and Cotto, and then you got people complaining about about them all the time. So I mean, Mayweather and Cotto and Pacquiao are not good. Who is good? You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, the criteria these days for boxing is just incredible. I mean, like you know, everybody, everybody's a critic. So <laughs> when we into that fight, I said, "Listen, man, you know, as you fought great competition, yet no, but he's only twenty years old." So yes. Yeah, you know, just throwing the country, turn pro at 17. So you can only expect so much from the guy. Um, they moved more long after they kept him busy. Yep. He was definitely moving. And, um, you know, he had a lot of amateur fights as well. He had like 197 mm-hmm. amateur fights. Mm-hmm. So um, just because he's not moving as fast as some people might like to see, you know, it doesn't mean that he hasn't been progressing. Now, going into the fight, I knew the height and reach was going to be an issue. You know, um, he's six foot. you got a long reach. And that's always going to be a pain in the ass. So going into the fight, I kind of, uh, you know, in retrospect, I'm not really an inside fighter. Right. I'm just basically boxing guys in and out. I have good reflexes and anticipation. And I've got boxed a lot of guys that never really had problems with height. So uh, I fought plenty of guys that were tall, that were 5'11", you know, that had reach on me. And, and again, I didn't have to fight them inside. Um, I could fight them in spurts inside, but I really have to fight them inside. And um, if there's one thing I would have changed about the way I trained for this fight, it would have been to work more on my inside game and really, you know, kind of rough up on the inside. But... That is not my character as a fighter. You know, you can't go against the grind too much. So I spoke a lot of tall, long guys. And again, in the gym, I was, you know, in most of the gyms I was, I was flying, um, I was having success as I always do, just with counter punching and anticipation and boxing in and out and, you know, moving around the ring and different angles and stuff. And, um, and I couldn't get that consistent rhythm with them. It's that simple. I came out in the first two rounds, I felt okay. Yep. And basically the story of the fight, you know, is that he stepped, uh, he did the next level in the third round, he stepped his game up, and I never did. Yeah. So, clearly, um, I came out good, and once he stepped it up, I should have stepped it up with him. I should have diversified a little more, and, um, and I didn't the long and short of it. Yeah, and I know I know. typically when a boxer loses, whether it's a knockout or on the scorecards, they, 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 they can't really take too much solace in knowing, well, it, in this case, it went to distance. But you went to distance, and I think a fight like that for a young kid is going to only enhance his career. Obviously, it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to go, but um, that's, you know, that's, that's the A and B of boxing, so to speak. Um, you know, how, you're 35 right now, so, you know, realistically – with the way things are progressing and the time that you put into your full-time job and your career and whatnot, you see yourself boxing for the next, say, three, four, five years as, as long as you can stay healthy and, and stay active and get fights? Or is there going to come a time where if you believe deep down, hey, you know what, if I just don't have it anymore, I'm still a young guy, I'm just going to, uh, you know, hang them up? Yeah, you know, um, I don't see myself going five years. I don't see myself I get 40 years old. Definitely not. Whether I can or not, I just don't know that I'm doing it. That being said, how many fighters, you know, say one thing and end up doing another thing. The hardest thing to do is to walk away from boxing. Um, Agree. I always said that my greatest accomplishment in boxing won't be anything I do in the ring. I'll be walking away from the sport in a close to my prime because nobody does that. You know? I mean, uh, off the top of my head, I can think of one exclusive joke that was actually is like the only two guys that, that have done that since I've been following the sport for, for 20 plus years, you know? So what has always been held against me because I, I turned pro at 20, almost 27 years old. I was like 29, uh, I'm sorry, I was 26 years and like nine months old. So it's almost like I was always old for boxing. You know what I mean? I waited too long to turn pro. You know, I had some personal problems that take care of the trade that I wasn't mature enough to turn pro. And then when I finally did, you know, whether I was 2 and 0 or 5 and 0 or 8 and 0, it was still already 26, already 27, and then, you know, then he's 30. So the, the, that's always going to be kind of held against me. So now, you know, I just turned 35 years old in January. So, you know, now, 
you know, age is going to be looked at even, even more so than ever. But I really don't have a lot of mileage on me at all. I don't have a lot of wear and tear on me at all. So I feel as good as I've ever felt right now. You know, I, I feel better. I felt better for the magnetic spike than I might have felt in the last, like, three, four years. Because I've trained, you know, I'm training harder and smarter, and I know what to do to get myself in the best possible, you know, position to win a fight, to get myself in the best, best situation to fight 10 rounds easy. And my stamina is not an issue whatsoever. So... The one thing with the with the Duffy Harrison fight, I mean, that fight flew by. I mean, it just went too quick. It was like one one second was the third round. I looked up, and it was the seventh round. I was running out of time, and I was shaking myself like that. But yeah, I wasn't hit. I mean, the fight flew by. It was the blur. So um, that was something that a couple of years ago was an issue. I wasn't as relaxed. I wasn't as composed. I I worried about my stamina a little more. I, so I was kind of looking up at the clock or looking up and seeing what rounds it is. And I don't think about any of those things anymore because I learned that kind of that way. I honestly feel like I can do this for, or I want to do this for about two more years, 10, 11 more fights, and that's it. And whatever I am at that point, regardless, just, just that's, 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 that's all there is to it. You know, I want to basically, my goal is to always have ten, a 10 year career in about 20 fights. Okay. Well, that, that that's fair and that's realistic. I mean, you got 29 yeah. fights right now, and you, you turn pro in what, 2006, and it's 2015. Yeah, so, so you're right there. You're right on point. Yeah, so, yeah pretty much. So, um, you know, I think the fact I think the fact that you can turn around and actually acknowledge and admit and kind of you're realistic and you understand um, that that when I say understand you understand where okay I'm 35 let me see what I have left in the tank and you know, I'm still healthy if I can walk away in that regard you know to, to me if you can kind of um, you know you understand that I, I I think that's a credit to you because a lot of fighters they're stubborn and you're right the, the, the toughest sport to walk. Listen, I mean, I can yeah. name any, any fighter that you can name from Gaudi to Mike Tyson to, to Mickey Ward and Holyfield and you look at all their records and they all in the same way loss after loss you know they, they fall until they couldn't fight anymore and that's what a fighter does and uh, I just don't want to you know I want to leave boxing content you know I mean I don't want to leave with regrets and say man I wish I, I wish would have called it a day you know 10 months ago and not for those last 3 fights that I just lost you know it's up it's up yeah. and, um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know push the envelope too far I feel great right now now thank goodness I've been I've, since September I've Two more again for you, and again, uh, to close it out, uh, a couple of minutes with uh, Tommy the Razor Ray Known, Double Jab Radio, Rich Canyon is here. I know you have the fight coming up, uh, the venue where you beat um, uh, McNichols uh, the 13th of March. Um, I know uh, no opponent. Uh, any names out there floating that you are at liberty uh, to mention on everything the air? I, I, everything got jammed up because originally I was the main event. Uh, the fight done on uh, Sports New York, and I was the main event. And then they ended up combining shows because Got uh, it. somebody Fred Cohen had a uh, you know, show down date. So what they did is basically I'm going to main event the SNY portion of the show. Got and it. And sign right after my fight. So now I went from being the main event to, listen, I'm no longer the main event. That's fine with me. I'll main event many more times. I have well, many main events already. So that's not a big deal. You know, it's a, it's a bigger card. It's a showtime card, which is cool. So it'll get a lot more press overall. Um, so my, I have not been the first priority where they have to lock up certain things, you know, beforehand now because I'm not the main event. Um, that being said, you know, like I said, Greg had, uh, 
texted me earlier today. I'm going to speak tonight. I told him I'll call him after I get back from the gym tonight. And, you know, we'll go over some things and hopefully have him locked by the latest, like Monday. You know, I don't want to push it too far. Good, good. And then uh, before I let you get out of here, if – uh I want to give any plugs if you're doing anything for any uh, one out there. I want to follow you uh, a little more closely, whether it's social media or not. I don't know if you're into Facebook, uh, do anything on Twitter, any websites, anything like that. Um, I always like to give yeah, everyone yeah, up to me. My website, um, my website Tom um, I got Instagram, which is started using. I actually had Twitter, but I don't use the Twitter yet. My brother does for me. <laughs> I actually don't use my Twitter page yet. But because uh, he did Instagram and Twitter for me at the same time, then he had to have some fun. And it was, uh, I was focusing on my fight. And I couldn't, I couldn't bother myself with that. That's probably not coming out the Instagram. So Instagram is all me. Facebook is all me. And, you know, my website, he, he, Twitter I'll get on eventually. I'll start, I'll start messing with that next week. <laughs> you got too many pies in the oven, my friend. <laughs> yeah, man. In this day and age, you have to have all these things. I know. It never – listen, it never ends. All right. Well, listen, uh, oh, it, it's always good to catch up with you. Once uh, – let us know uh, about your opponent. If you get confirmation on that, definitely check back in, and uh, we'll make note of it. And uh, hopefully uh, we can get you back on a little closer to the fight or after the fight. Always appreciate a couple moments. Absolutely. No problem. All right, Tommy. Be well. All right. Catch you later. Okay. All right, there you have it. A couple minutes with Tommy the Razor Ray Known. Uh, he is a hard-working boxer, really doing it on his own. All right, we have a um, pretty good weekend as well, um, jam-packed to continue, as we alluded to. We'll probably talk to um, another hot prospect in Adam Lopez on Sunday's edition of Journeyman Boxing. Also, Monday, we'll take a look at uh, some action in the New York Daily News Golden Gloves. We'll also start to talk a little more female boxing, a bunch of cards uh, coming our way up and down the East Coast. Everyone, don't forget... Live from the Journeyman Boxing Studios, another special edition of Double Jab Radio. Special thanks to Casanova Boxing Gloves, Victory Boxing Gym in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and of course the Atlantic City Pound, Atlantic City, New Jersey, the AC Pound, always making a difference. Everyone have a good Saturday night. Thanks for tuning in, and of course worldwide on journeymanboxing.com, and our good friends in Spain and Latin America listening to us online. Oh, mercy para nosotros, amigos que nos escuchan en España y América Latina. Gracias por tu tiempo. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Rich Q on Q. Lock us in at journeymanboxing.com. We have some great updated content as well as photos provided exclusively by our photographer, Shade Shogogi. Follow her on Twitter as well. S. Shogogi. Also, remember, it's not the destination, but it's the journey you should enjoy. Thanks for joining us as we always take you beyond the fight on Journeyman Boxing and, of course, Double Job Radio. We will talk to you on Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time ringside for a little more Boss Double Job Radio.